Boom, we're recording. Um, and let's get this PowerPoint on the screen. One second. All right, you guys see that PowerPoint okay? Thumbs up if you can. Almer, you're the only one I can see right now. Thumbs up, sweet. You got the training peak screen there, excellent. Cool. Um, so let's dive in a little bit about training peaks and how we can use it to kind of optimize our training. So I, for a lot of you one-on-one -on -one, um, athletes, I obviously cover a lot of this uh, for you in terms of managing training load, stuff like that. But a lot of you on the performance plan, I think I'll be able to give you some tools today to help you kind of uh, be able to guide a little bit more of your volume and training stress and uh, give you some kind of key tools that'll allow you to um, kind of enhance your training and have some stuff to check back in on um, week to week, day to day, month to month. And kind of uh, as you go into 2023, I think you'll have some kind of eye opening things looking at some of your graphs in there of how you can uh, better set up your training as a whole as you go into the next year too. Um, so I'm going to cover a couple of things today. So I'm going to start out, I'm going to talk a bit about some of the features of training peaks, just dive a little further into that. So, you know, kind of all the stuff that training peaks has to offer. Um, and then a bunch of the kind of metrics around what they mean. I'm sure you've seen a bunch of the stuff, whether it's uh, the fitness score, TSS and things like that, and kind of what they actually mean, give you a better understanding of that. Um, and how to update your settings, things like that. And then I'll talk um, a little bit on a higher level at the end of how you can actually use these metrics, check back into them to um, give yourself another supporting metric to allow you to kind of optimize your training. Like let's, uh, the biggest thing I can say at the start of this is that um, you're obviously more than just numbers on training peaks. So this is just another tool to help to optimize your training. This doesn't mean this becomes your be all end all. And you're just a, a number at this point, you need to um, pair this, uh, these sort of measures with things like your um, subjective measures to of how you're actually feeling in relation to this stuff, um, as well as nailing that recovery nutrition to, to really become an athlete as a whole. But uh, these are some great metrics to really help you have kind of a dialed approach to your training. Um, so a lot of you probably just have the basic training piece account where you can just view kind of work your daily workouts, fitness summaries, um, kind of the training plans we put in for you. And you kind of have the mobile app access where the premium, uh, you get some enhanced stuff on there is um, a cool one that a lot of the athletes like is the peak performances. So I kind of put a picture of that on the side where you can like scale by run and bike. Um, you could do it by like time or um, like power numbers and um, compare kind of peak numbers for a certain distance or time. Um, and you could do it for like year to year or like your best ever kind of results on stuff. So it's kind of a cool picture to be able to see um, some of your best lifetime or like yearly bests on stuff. So there's some cool stuff you can dive into there. And uh, it also shows you when you set peak performances on a workout. So if you hit a 5k PB or ran your second best 5k or something that would pop up on your workout after the fact. Um, so that's kind of a, a cool one to see and an exciting one that motivates athletes as well. Um, and then you can move around future workouts and, and set future workouts a little more with the premium. Um, I'm going to go through a bunch of the advanced metrics and charts that you have there. And then within some of those charts, there's this performance management chart that is this like kind of a hectic chart, but I'll help you kind of uh, understand it a little more of what, uh, what it actually means. But it's essentially this whole snapshot of all your workouts, all your fitness built over um, many weeks and plopping in every single workout there to kind of give you a visual of what your trainings look like over the course of a year. Um, one of the biggest things is all these metrics that I'm going to talk about will only be accurate in your training peaks if you have up-to-date settings and zones in your uh, training peaks. So this is in the account settings part. Um, there's some uh, key ones that you'll want to set up. Uh, you can go up, you can put heart rate stuff in there for the times that you're not using um, like run pace or bike uh, FTP or stuff like that. You could do it based off of heart rate, but the most accurate ones are if you have your up-to-date um, swim kind of threshold in there. So 
I would say like, if you're doing the swim threshold numbers, usually like a max effort kind of 1500 time trial, if you were doing it without doing a triathlon, like it would be that number. So, um, like if I was using my say half Ironman time, I'd probably have it at five to 10 seconds per hundred kind of quicker than that. Um, in terms of my swim settings in there, uh, bike FTP, keeping that one up to date in there too. And it gives you these like different, uh, kind of calculations for setting up the zones in there. Um, most of the top, like two or three in there are, are pretty good. The Joe Friel ones or like Andy Coogan ones are all going to set you up with pretty similar like zones in there. So, um, don't, you don't have to overthink too much of what, uh, which zone calculator you're going to use in there. Uh, but by keeping that FTP up to date. So when you go through an off season and your FTP is lower, um, and you're hopping back into training here, like knowing that, like, keep those up to date. Cause say, if you're, say if your FTP in your peak season was like 300 Watts, but suddenly you've taken a bunch of time off and it's only 250 Watts. Um, your scores that you're going to get will not be correct. Cause it's not at that same correct intensity, which I'll explain a little bit more coming up. Um, but keeping that FTP up to date and same with that run threshold pace up to date. Um, so usually your run threshold pace, a faster runner, it's going to be closer to like a 15 K or half marathon type of pace where, uh, a slightly slower runner, it's probably going to be closer to like your 10 K pace. So something like you're going to do for like a pure hour race is kind of around what your, um, a good run threshold pace to have in there would be. So these are some of the metrics you've probably seen a bunch of times in training peaks. And I'm going to, I have some slides coming up. We're going to go a little further into each of these. Um, so you've probably seen TSS. So training stress scores. So that's that like number that you see beside a workout every time where it gives you after you complete it. Um, a lot of the workouts you'll see on the bike when I'm programming and building them in training peaks, they'll already have a TSS assigned to them before. Cause I'm actually building it based off of, um, power metrics on there. So it knows like exactly what, if you did it exactly in erg mode, um, what that TSS score is going to be ahead of time, which is where we come to that, like workout adherence part. And I'll, um, talk a little bit as we go on the training part, why it's so important to, to stick to the workout adherence when it comes to this fitness fatigue and form stuff. But, uh, TSS, essentially it just gives a score of on the physical stress of a specific workout. Um, the fitness score as a whole, and like I said, I got slides coming up to go deeper into this. Don't you guys worry. Um, the fitness score is kind of that cumulative effect of training over like a bunch of weeks and months. So it's taking all these TSS scores and giving you kind of an overall fitness score, um, that's calculated based off of, uh, workouts over a bunch of time, um, fatigue, which you've seen is like. ATL, which is like acute training load. So it's kind of the short term effect of some of your more recent workouts. So it's more heavily weighted to some of the, the short term, more recent workouts. Cause obviously you're probably not feeling as much a workout that was four weeks ago as you are the one from two days ago. So it's more heavily weighted as you would feel to more recent workouts. Um, and that CTL stood for chronic training load. So longer term being chronic ATL acute being shorter term. And then that form score that you get. So you'd see that you have that, those three numbers there, um, that form score is essentially just, um, typically CTL minus ATL. So, um, it describes kind of your freshness or kind of, uh, ability to perform kind of during that time. So as you're doing tons of work and that ATL, that fatigue really builds on a short term when you maybe go through that, um, a big weekend, like a Saturday, Sunday, where you've had a long ride, a long run, and you're, um, you're tired at the end of that weekend, your form score will likely be like in way negative during that time. So you'll probably see if you've been doing work, tons of workouts over a while, you'll see something a lot of times in that, like minus 10 to minus 30 score, um, in terms of like that acute training of fatigue, and that'll be kind of that form number that'll show up there. So your fatigue will get really high and it'll be higher than kind of that, uh, that fitness level and you'll end up with a, a negative score for form. So um, I'll talk a little bit about form scores when we come up to races and kind of how that plays into like training load as a whole. Um, but again, just, I'm going to keep giving that preface. These, uh, these are um, like objective numbers. So you really got to pair your subjective feedback with that to make progress, which is why I get one-on-one -on -one athletes to put in um, how they're feeling around workouts. Cause that's every bit as important as the numbers that are coming out of there to be able to uh, modify your training going forward. 
All right, let's dive a little further into TSS. So the, as I mentioned on the last one, it's kind of a score assigned to a specific workout. So this is very much um, based on duration and intensity. And you'll see on the next slide, I have a bunch of comparison workouts so you can see, um, but it's based on the duration of it plus the intensity of it. So um, more heavily weighted, the longer you're doing something, the more it's going to rack up that TSS score and the more intense it is, the higher the TSS uh score is going to be. So it's really key. We'll, I'll show you this ATP thing, which is like the athlete kind of long-term plan where you can build, um, towards like what you want your kind of fitness score to be at a certain race and how, um, you use kind of TSS per week to help guide some of that and looking ahead at the week. So, you know, like how much TSS you're doing week over week. Um, and if you're going to raise it up or hold it, depending on kind of how you're feeling in the training, um, to give you like a, a general idea of what a TSS score would be. If you rode at a hundred percent FTP on the bike or ran like max threshold pace for a full hour straight, um, you would get a hundred TSS score for that hour. So that's where like you need huge recovery from things like a marathon, a half marathon, cause you're running at such a high intense pace, close to threshold for a long period of time. You're combining that intensity and duration. You're going to get a crazy high TSS score for things like that. Um, in terms of not all TSS is created equal. I'll talk about that on the next slide. Um, again, you need those settings up to date to get correct TSS scores, but, um, as kind of a general rule of thumb, um, most swimming will probably yield you about one TSS per minute, um, of kind of active swimming in there. So if you were doing like a, a 30 minute swim, you'd expect to get, uh, depending on the complexion of the workout, a lot of them will be sim somewhere around 30 TSS for that um, 30 minute kind of swim workout there. Um, a cycling workout would be weighted a little bit below one TSS per minute and then running obviously quite a taxing sport, higher heart rate type of stuff. Um, you'd expect that to be a little bit above one TSS per minute. Um, a big thing, if you don't add, um, scores to your strength workouts, maybe you don't like use a watch or anything during it, which like, I personally don't just make sure you're putting in, a. TSS score after the fact in your strength workouts, like for a 60 minute workout, assuming you didn't like go to a Tuesday or Thursday at LP, that's obviously like endurance heavy. If you're doing the strength or on like a Monday or Friday, and maybe you're doing that full 60 minute workout, you could put something like 25 to 30 TSS in there. Cause it would be, um, it's still taxing on your body and, and plays into your overall score for the week. Um, and you don't necessarily need, I just put the TSS, um, calculation in there, but you really don't need to like, remember this yourself, as long as your settings are up to date and you're uploading, um, correct data, it's going to calculate that for you in there. Um, but let's compare a couple very similar workouts here and how the TSS score changes on them. Sorry, this is such a blurry, uh, graph here. Um, so let's use this baseline workout on the far left. So this is a pretty simple workout. We're doing four by 10 minutes at 90% FTP. You could use the same application to like a running workout, like four by 10 at 90% of your um, threshold. So a workout like that would give you about 68 TSS. Let me show you the same workout, a different workout right beside where you did seven by 10 minutes. The so that first workout was only an hour and one minute. This same workout right beside it is an hour and 48 minutes. Our intensity was much lower on it. So you're doing seven by 10 minutes. That was at 65% FTP. You end up with almost the exact same TSS score. So you start to get the idea of how intensity and duration can um, play into uh, the TSS score that you're getting for a given workout. And uh, then you can see coming up what intensity does to it. So if we raise that same first workout to four by 10 at hundred percent FTP, suddenly the TSS score is 15 higher now. And then um, a different way of looking at it um, where you go four by 10 at 90% plus I added an extra 15 minutes of easy aerobic time at the end. So all that we did on that one is the same core of the workout was still there, um, but we just added some extra easy aerobic time at the end. And we were able to add 10 TSS to the score there. So you see, you start to get an idea, um, how you can start to add like stress week over week to a 
training plan. So it's either like during this time, our focus is on adding volume to a training plan. So I'd more be recommending instead of when you're doing these four by tens at 90%, instead of only doing an hour and suddenly going over power on every workout, you'd probably look to just add this extra 15 minutes of easy aerobic time. Cause we're working on building out that volume during this time. And then we'll layer on some more um, intensity as we get uh, into the new year. So you can see what I mean when I'm like, okay, add a little bit of volume so that we're still adding TSS onto the week. Um, but not necessarily like jacking up the amount of intensity we're throwing in the week. So that's how you can see kind of different TSS scores based on the intensity and volume um, of a workout. Um, so we talk about that fitness score. People get a little obsessive about this. Um, obviously that fitness score needs to come up and down at times, um, depending on uh, periods of hard work and periods of recovery where we throw in a recovery week or when you're tapering for a race like that fitness is, uh, is natural is naturally dropping. So that's where it doesn't always tell the perfect story. Cause sometimes, um, say if your fitness, you had it up to a hundred and you'd have like a down week where we're taking, uh, like a recovery week in there, your fitness score could drop to like 92, 90 during that part. But if, you recovered well and absorbed that last training block, you may actually come out of it like physiologically fitter. So just think that fitness score isn't always everything. And just because it dropped in one day doesn't mean necessarily your actual fitness like totally dropped, but it's a good, again, supporting metric to know that we're loading um, quantifiably kind of workouts week over week. But this, uh, this CTL kind of fitness is kind of duration and intensity um, of kind of those TSS workouts over the last six weeks to kind of several months. Um, it's weighted a little more in that last six weeks. Um, so yeah, as you continue to kind of raise up that fitness score, that CTL, um, typically the amount of kind of fatigue and TSS you can handle. A lot of times you're usually fitter during that. You can usually handle some more of that um, and your body's kind of can handle that training stimulus a little bit more. So, um, those people that can hold kind of that, that higher fitness level, which is why we say like, try and do something year round instead of taking like these, um, big off seasons where you have these huge plummets in fitness, especially after two weeks, it's, it's weighted to the short term for a reason, because after two weeks, um, most of the research shows that fit your fitness, like physiologically does dip very quickly. So that's why we call it foundation season. And we want you to keep it year round because, um, if you can keep that fitness score at like a decent baseline level and keep it kind of rising year over year by doing a little bit more, you give yourself such a better foundation to be able to take on uh, more volume and intensity as the, the time rises. But if you, uh, if you don't have that good base of fitness, um, that's where you can run into a lot of trouble of, uh, of ramping up too quickly and stuff like that. Or when you start to overdo workouts and, and go over TSS on prescribed workouts, you can start to get yourself in trouble. Um, so that's kind of the, the fitness score, but just a weighted average kind of of that daily TSS you're doing from the past six weeks. Um, talking a little bit about uh, fatigue or that ATL score. So it's again, that short-term metric of those kind of TSS scores during the uh, more the last week of your training. So it's heavily weighted on that, the workouts that you're still really feeling in your system during that part. Um, so again, it's the average TSS um, for that kind of last week and really stresses those most recent workouts because those are the ones that are kind of pushing or um, pulling back fitness during that time. And then that, uh, that form, that uh, training stress balance that we talked about is just really that CTL minus uh, ATL. Um, so the balance kind of between that fitness and fatigue, and you need to, uh, you need to have periods of negative to keep, uh, pushing up that fitness score week over week. Uh, but you also need some of those, why we put in those, uh, recovery weeks in there to allow you to sometimes come back to even or plus for a couple of days to allow you to absorb training. And then you would see in a taper, um, usually depending on the athlete, um, you need to bring them typically back to just a very slight negative. So, um, a lot of times I've seen in my racing, I, I race well around like a minus two to a minus five, um, where some athletes need a little bigger taper and maybe they're going more like a plus five or 10. So that's where you'll kind of learn, um, your kind of taper strategy over a while. And, um, that's where I'm kind of watching 
one-on-one athletes and looking after the fact of like how much could they take on kind of in that final week um, and where was kind of their sweet spot in that uh, that kind of uh, form score to be able to kind of perform at their best. So those are things I'm looking at after. And if athletes say they came into a race super flat and I see they were at like plus 15 or plus 20 or something like that, maybe they took it way too easy in that final week and they're, um, they didn't have enough kind of fatigue and they lost their sharpness in there um, where um, and where maybe next time we need to have them more around a zero or a minus five. So they're not, uh, not stale by the time they get to a race. So these are things that you can look at, um, even going back to, uh, past races and seeing kind of, uh, what your score was as you came up to that race in terms of the, uh, training stress balance was uh, a good one to look at for past stuff. Cause you could see if maybe you came in, uh, a little flat or a little overdone. Just looking at the chat there. Yes, Jess, two weeks does plummet that score quickly or getting sick. Those are, are huge ones. So you see like the value of keeping fitness over the course of a year and how things like time off and, and sickness can really play into that score. And it does, it does affect your fitness, but also looking at a year like Jess has had, she needs a two weeks like that off because um, you need a mental and physical reset to come in better. So it's worth the drop in that, uh, that fitness score to come back rejuvenated, fresh and wanting to train as opposed to just kind of grinding it out through the year and, uh, and not having any motivation. Cause that's a, a quick way to fall off a cliff too, if you're starting to miss workouts and stuff like that. So it's worth having those peaks and valleys. And I'll show you on some of the graphs coming up of, uh, of what kind of a, a year can look like in terms of ebbs and flows in there and how you can push up and down that fitness in there. All right. Maybe what I'll do is, um, coming up to some of these sections, um, I'll actually hop over to training peaks in a minute. I just want to get through a couple more of these, uh, metrics pieces to get out ahead of it. And then we'll, uh, we'll dive into actual training peaks and looking at some of the graphs and stuff in there. Um, when you're looking, so some of the key, um, screens that you can kind of focus on when you're looking at kind of uh, week to week is looking at that weekly summary. So both volume and kind of that total TSS you had for the week and some of your weeks, like I said, if you haven't been keeping up with it and putting in um, scores for things like strength training, or you've had things out of whack, like your, like your settings um, not up to date, then obviously like some of those scores in the past aren't going to be reflective of what your actual stress score was for that week. So your biggest thing um, going forward is making sure you have updated settings there and you can use it to kind of monitor your training to um, make sure that you're um, kind of slowly building that TSS week over week. Um, but sometimes it's also good to just hold TSS for a couple of weeks. If you're, you're finding things overwhelming, you can still build fitness by um, holding that TSS for a little period and then building it off of, uh, off of that week over week. But when you're looking at the calendar, biggest things to look for volume, um, kind of that planned versus completed TSS. So if your TSS was already in there for the week ahead of time, um, and suddenly you did an extra hundred TSS on that week, um, just know that that will play a factor down the line. Um, if you maybe are already having a decently aggressive training plan and suddenly you're, um, adding extra volume or pushing way over power or way over paces on, um, certain workouts, that's where you start to jack up TSS. And if you're getting it suddenly in a range where, um, it's not sustainable, that's where you start to get overtrained or injured and things like that. So that's where, um, workout adherence is a, a huge part, especially in a, in a larger training plan, you need, uh, you need that TSS to kind of stay in a certain kind of range to make sure that, um, you can actually absorb the training week over week. So, um, you, like I said, you can mess with the TSS either by adding slight pieces of duration or intensity to workouts. Um, so we'll look at some of these, I'm going to go into some of these, uh, dashboard charts that are on training peaks now. So let me just, uh, stop this share and I'll go over to training peaks. Um, and I'll start on the calendar view here first. Let's see here, training peaks. 
All right. So we're on training peaks here. So I'm going to go through a couple of the different sections here. Um, so this is premium view and I'm on like the coaches view here. So like I can see other athletes and training plans and workout libraries and stuff like that, probably some extra stuff. But, um, when we look back at like first the calendar view, um, just looking at like some of this stuff on the right side here of like, what was your fitness score to finish the week? What was your form score at your fatigue? You can see kind of what you finished the week at there. And then, um, uh, some of the other things in there, volume, what was your TSS for the week? And then looking at kind of volume of the specific workouts there, um, is great. And then you can also see kind of the total cal burn of like a week like that, which is good information as well. Um, so those are just kind of the key things. And then obviously looking at specific workouts, um, a good one to see here is like when I did this workout, um, for example, it was supposed to be 49 TSS. I had 55 total. That's because I added a couple extra minutes of um, aerobic base kind of at the end here. So you just want those numbers as much as possible to be pretty close because the way I'm planning a lot of these weeks, especially in um, like the performance training plans and one-on-one -on -one is based off of like kind of volume and TSS per week. So if you're blowing by the TSS every time, then um, you're maybe not going to be going at a sustainable approach in terms of the, the fatigue and form scores you're going to um, yield each week. It's not this like stockpile to just try and forge as much TSS in a week. It needs to be manageable and you can only, there's really only a safe uh, number kind of typically it's like below six or seven of what you can actually add on fitness per week safely. So um, if you're jacking that TSS up, TSS up week over week, then um, you might not be at a sustainable level and you're just putting yourself at such a bigger risk for um, injury and overtraining and not being able to absorb the training. Um, so that's kind of the calendar view here. So um, another thing you can use here is this uh, ATP here at the top, which is like an annual training plan. So um, for example, and I have a graph um, of some of the ranges of fitness scores that people are at in uh, depending on kind of if they're highly trained or newer in the sport, some ranges, depending on what they're training for, whether it's Ironman, marathon, stuff like that, um, to have an idea of like what kind of fitness score you want to reach before a race to, to really be ready for the demands of it. So I'm just going to use my like Texas block coming up as a sample. So you can set this um, ATP up based on a couple of different ways. You could do it based on weekly hours. I prefer to do it kind of um, either off of like a weekly TSS that slowly progresses within a safe volume, or um, I have an idea of what like a good uh, TSS event fitness kind of score that I would want somebody at, depending on what their athletic past is. Um, so that's where I would, I'm a lot of times using this event fitness kind of thing to um, get a person to a certain score. And it'll give me kind of what, um, what kind of those TSS scores should be week over week to allow you to continue to progress fitness to that certain, uh, fitness level. I'll show you some of the, uh, the fitness levels coming up of some like pro athletes and, um, elite athletes and what they kind of reach in certain sports, um, which I know you guys will find interesting. Um, but my goal, like for example, for Texas, I wanted to get somewhere close to like 150 for my fitness score in there. So, when I put that in at the race and put in what my current fitness is at that time, um, it'll give me an idea of like safe volumes of TSS I can add on week to week with recovery weeks in there. So you see like the next couple of weeks I'm building TSS and most of this I'm doing with volume and not a lot of intensity per se. And then as I get maybe into this next block, I might have the volume pinned for a couple of weeks and I'm adding intensity on, but I can still slowly raise this TSS per week up in a safe manner. So my ramp rate, I'm really only looking at about seven on the fitness score per week. As you start to get up in eight, nine, 10, it'll put this little like red, um, red like uh, notification spot there that it's like outside of the recommended ranges. Um, so you see like my goal is to keep building um, fitness throughout each of these blocks. I have these down weeks of TSS to allow me to absorb my fitness will go slightly down, but then I come back and I'm at that next fitness. I'm back at that fitness score the next week and building upon it. Um, so I have a number of those blocks. Here's Texas right here. 
Um, and my goal is to be somewhere around 150 on the fitness score for that one. So I reach up to a peak of about 175 in that. And then through the taper, you go down to about 150 during that time. Cause you're going to drop the TSS in those final couple of weeks to, uh, to be able to absorb and get your, um, that, uh, fatigue score in a good spot when you come to that race. So it's not, um, in like a minus 30 state, or you're probably, um, overcooked coming into that race. Um, so it's a very fine line of keeping sharpness up to that race. So, um, you can see kind of those, uh, those things that um, you're building week over week, those ramp rates of about six to eight kind of thing. And then, um, letting it drop kind of during this time into a, uh, into a race. So you can kind of see a plan as a whole and how you go about kind of slowly inching up the TSS, depending on what your goal is in that part based on int adding intensity or volume, you can add them both at the same time. You just can't add as much of both of them. If you, um, are adding both of them at the same time, uh, but you can kind of see how TSS and obviously as I'm getting fitter and that fitness score is getting higher, I'm able to absorb higher loads of this weekly TSS as well. Um, if I just jumped right into 1400 TSS weeks, I'd be dead in a week. So, um, yeah, really being able to, to pile on those weeks is, um, over a training plan is what allows you to, to really build it. And it's kind of got cool stuff here. Like if you look at this graph here, like I can see that I'm building, 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 um, you can even do like little drags on these graphs. But now you see I've like ramped up too much on this week. So it's up to a nine on the ramp rate this week and gives me this notification that it's kind of outside of the safe like building um, sort of realm. And like I said, it's like you can always try and go on the edge of this part here, but there's something to be said of like um, having a little bit extra freshness and leaving it a little bit below that kind of um, fine line at all times. Because again, you just um, increase your chance, your risk of that injury or overtraining pretty quickly, which is that same sentiment that I'm giving during workouts as well Is it's okay to leave a little bit out there in each workout, because if you can do that, you're going to be consistent over many weeks. And it's this slow build of volume in TSS that actually yields results and not, um, you knocking out that last interval 30 seconds quicker than, uh, then prescribed, all you're doing is tipping that TSS load higher. And eventually it's going to catch up to you with, with something like an injury, especially when you're doing it in something like running. So you can kind of see how this, uh, this is kind of a cool, um, numbers view of how you can look at kind of a, a training plan as a whole, and you can do it for like a full year to see like kind of peaks and valleys. Um, I like to focus on kind of a, a six months ahead kind of section on, on this ATP, um, so let's look at, uh, coming off of that, let's look at, um, some of the cool graphs here in training peaks and some of the key ones I like to use, um, when looking at, uh, kind of a training block or a week that's just passed. I think there's lots of, uh, good data about your training that you can gather and, and look back upon and help to plan kind of, uh, improvements for yourself as you go into a next year. And yes, Peter, this is a premium feature. So um, I, a lot of times I actually create some of this uh, for the one-on-one -on -one athletes. I have like a separate Excel sheet for them that I build a lot of this in just because there's like some extra notes and stuff I like to add beyond that. Um, so I kind of, some of them I'll build in here and some I, uh, I just build in Excel, but using essentially the same, uh, the same build feature, just my own rendition of it. Cause there's some extra things I like to add just answering Peter's question there. So let's dive into some of my favorite graphs. And we, uh, when we talk about this training peaks, um, these training peaks graph in here. So, um, this completed duration, so you can like add and subtract different graphs on the left here. Um, there's all these like time-based ones, kind of peak power stuff, um, duration sort of stuff that you can add as well. Um, but some of the ones I really like to use a lot is, um, this fitness summary one. So, um, when you talk about these three bars here, you can kind of change the, um, time that you're looking at. So if I want to look at like the last 180, um, days, for example, I could do that and see like what my, the complexion of my training looks like. So 
obviously I've been, um, this is my stuff. So bike heavy and then run and swim strength in there as well. Uh, but you could also have it set up as like, just looking at the last seven days and what that looks like or whatever custom, uh, kind of date or time you want to look at on there. Um, you can see kind of your completed duration during that time. Um, some of the other ones I like to look at, I think this is one of the, this one here, duration by week, um, of all workout types. Um, so both of these are almost the same graph. One's just looking at time-based and one's looking at TSS. I think this is one of the biggest, um, telltale factors of a good athlete. And one that's performing at a high level is somebody who has a high average TSS and, uh, and, or, hours throughout the entire year. Um, and you can kind of see the graph to that corresponds with that of clear sections of building and recovery within that. Um, so you can like double click and look a little closer to it. So like my average throughout the entire year is about 10 hours per week. Um, I can compare it to some other athletes that um, maybe are a little inconsistent through the year or dealt with injuries and stuff like that. And you might find they're at uh, like six or seven hours average for a week. So like this is actually like hours for the entire year. And obviously training correctly is one of the biggest telltale signs of an athlete that will be able to absorb lots of training and have good results over the year, which is again, why we talk about this foundation season of um, being consistent year round. You don't need to do a lot during this time, but if you can just do some semblance of stuff to keep that fitness score pretty even, keep some volume in there. Um, it allows you to absorb those big training blocks a lot more. So, um, same thing with TSS, you can look at the same thing of, uh, like TSS volume in a week for the most part, it's going to, um, mimic a lot of what that kind of duration per week looks like. They should look pretty similar for the most part. Um, which mine for the most part does you have a couple TSS weeks that are like more intense there where I think like this was American triple T where, um, it was those four races in three days. So with that one, maybe the volume total time wasn't that intense, but you were doing four races in three days. So the intensity was super high on it. So it was a really high TSS week on that one where it doesn't show as much on the volume graph on it. Um, so these are two of my like favorite graphs, especially when I start with a new athlete, I can a lot of times be like, Hey, like, here's a very good snapshot of what your year looks like. And some areas where you could improve to help your overall fitness in there. Um, some of the other ones that are nice to look at is looking at duration by week, um, for individual sports. You could do that again by hours or kilometers, um, like biking. I like to look at for the most part by, uh, by time run is good by time or distance. And then, uh, swim is good for, um, time is usually a good one on that one. Um, distance is fine there too. Um, biking is just the weird one that is usually a little better to look at by time, just because, uh, if you were suddenly riding a bunch of mountains in a week and suddenly only covered hundred K, but it was at 15 K an hour. Cause you were climbing mountains. It wouldn't really tell you the full story in there. Um, and you could also do these by TSS as well would be a, a good one to look at, assuming that all your stuff backlogged was at correct settings and correct TSS again, um, which is an important one. So it's nice to look at individual sports too, and see areas that you could have improved on this. Like when I look at mine, I'm like, well, clearly I slacked on swimming early in the year, but then I got in like a decent groove and was consistent there. Um, where, um, that time I was clearly focusing a little more on that spring run build there peaking for a race. And then in tri season, I was a little bit, um, just kind of holding volume or up and down, depending on where I was in a training block and then adding a little more bike volume during that time. So, um, you can, you can kind of look back on your year and see where you were having areas of focus in there as well. Um, but these are some of the like top graphs. Um, here's that PMC one I was talking about, which is like that all encompassing one. This can be, uh, I kind of like, to look at those individual graphs because it's a little bit nicer to um, look at, but this is kind of a cool one to see. Um, so it takes into account, like each of these dots here is like a different workout. So if you think of each of those dots, that's like a TSS um, dart on your board there where you did whatever exactly 70 TSS for a workout and each of those is on there. And then you can see this um, blue line here is that fitness score. Um, 
that you were looking at throughout the year. So you can see how fitness builds and dips throughout the year, depending on when you're working towards kind of key events here. So if we look uh, kind of at my year here, um, my first kind of peak here was uh, kind of coming into around the bay. And then I kind of had another one coming up here towards uh, the Mississauga half marathon. And then I had kind of a, another one coming up here that dipped down into Musselman. And then you see my Barrelman one. And then I didn't have as good of a build with some sickness and coming off of that uh, Barrelman one there. Um, and so it was just kind of a small little rebuild towards like 70.3 worlds there. So you can kind of see how the, the training flowed throughout the year to peak kind of for um, certain events. And these other two lines that you're looking at there, those other two metrics of uh, that fatigue and that form. So you can see um, like during these parts I was doing, uh, these were clearly key sections where I was doing like a fair amount of volume and intensity. I was doing high TSS. So my fatigue was high on these. Um, my form score would have been low, heavy in the negatives, but you can see fitness building throughout that part. So um, usually when that form score is super high and you have lots of freshness, obviously that fitness score is kind of going down with it. Um, so that's where really, when you think about your training is having those key sections of, uh, of adding fatigue on key periods of recovery. And that just keeps building the fitness, uh, over time, but this is a good snapshot, assuming all your settings were up to date of kind of what your, your year as the whole looks like. Um, so those are some of my favorite graphs in there. There's one other I wanted to show you, and that's kind of um, time spent in speed or power zones. So this is kind of a, a cool one to look at when you uh, are looking at, like maybe I'll just do like running as an example. Um, so you look at my zones this time of year in running, and I'm a lot of times this is what, maybe I'll do it as a, a full year here to give you a snapshot of like, uh, let's do 180 days. You see my running zones and what we're always talking about of like tons of easy running time in that week. So that's 57 plus um, 21. I'm almost at 80% of my running. So think about that 80, 20 kind of running plan um, with 80% of our running being kind of easier to moderate kind of zone one to two stuff. Um, so almost 80% of my running was in there. And then the rest of that time kind of being sprinkled across some of those other zones um, in some of the like early part of the season, you'd notice probably lots of time in this zone one or two. And then we'd touch a little more on some of those like anaerobic zones. Maybe you have a little more four, five, six, seven time and less than that three and four. But obviously in a year like mine where I'm doing um, a fair amount of like middle distance, half marathon sort of tempo uh, marathon pace stuff, moderate stuff for a half Ironman or an Ironman kind of distance stuff where you're starting to get kind of uh, touching on that zone three and four a lot more Then mine's going to have a little more time in there. Um, so it's going to change depending on the time and the training block you're in there too. But this is also a good telltale sign to check in of like, um, if my settings were all up to date throughout the year, do I have way too much time in this zone three, four, five time? And did that contribute to uh, me maybe not making progress or getting injured? Um, these are good graphs to check in on because um, they'll uh, kind of tell the story if maybe you've been uh, overcooking your running a fair amount. Um, this is the biggest discipline that we know that has the highest risk for injury. So this is why a lot of times I'm looking a lot uh, at athletes and where they fall in these uh these zones because this is a a quick way for an athlete to uh to get injured so a good one to keep an eye on for yourself like bike volume stuff is going to look uh a little bit different definitely not zone seven so maybe i didn't have a uh one of my setting oh that's speed zones let me do uh let's do this one let's do time and power zones for a bike one here So biking, you can see you can get away with a little bit more in some of these higher zones just because it's not as high impact. Um, let's just see what kind of time we're on here. Let's do 180 days. Um, yeah, biking, you can get away a little more with uh, some more moderate intensity sort of stuff around that kind of Ironman pace stuff, which is more on that uh, kind of zone two to three kind of moderate stuff. You can get away with more intensity in a week there um, without that risk of injury. So 
Um, that's where bike can, uh, is a great spot to, to add on a little more intensity in your week and, uh, and not have as uh, big of risk of injury. So you can kind of see how, depending on the demands of each sport, why, uh, why you'd be a little bit, um, more cautious on sticking to your zone one and two in a running versus a, uh, a cycling in there. Um, is there any other graphs here that I like to use? Um, and you may find some that, uh, that you really like, um, more than others. Let's see if this fitness history one, it's more of like a graph one where you can see, um, kind of past stuff. It's going off BPM where I don't have a heart rate for everything. So it might not be a good one. Let's see fitness summary. If that has anything, I think I might already have that one out here. Um, fitness summary. Yeah. So I already, I already kind of showed you that one in terms of, uh, what you did during that time. Um, so those are kind of the main graphs that I'm using when, um, looking at an athlete. So they're good ones you can check on. And if you have like a question on a graph or something, you could always send me a screenshot on if you had running zones that looked crazy off, or if your, um, full year looked, um, had huge gaps in it, or your fitness had these crazy plummets in there, I can probably offer you up some like little modifications of, uh, of what you could do within the year to um, kind of enhance that a little bit more. Um, so those are some of the key uh, graphs I have in there. Let me hop back to the slideshow here. Did anybody want me to check out any other uh, training peaks pieces while I was kind of in there, or am I good to hop back to the uh, graph to the uh, PowerPoint here? Any other graphs you wanted to see or you had questions on? Good for now. Cool. Um, we can, you can always save it to the end too, and I can stick around and do some more stuff here. Um, let me hop back to the PowerPoint here. So, um, what do we kind of do with all this knowledge? I've touched on it, I think a fair amount during this, but just, uh, really sticking to zones, being consistent throughout the year, um, workout adherence, making sure that you're slowly progressing week over week from uh, a TSS perspective, either intensity or um, duration. Um, I definitely recommend this time of year. You don't want to pile on tons of intensity. Um, if you can, uh, adding on like slow aerobic volume is a nice way to slowly continue to tick up that TSS and fitness score during this time. Um, and then adding on some intensity as we, uh, go a little more into the season is, uh, a lot of times the way I recommend, depending on where you're falling, uh, where your races are falling, especially for you guys who have, don't have races till next summer or even the spring. Um, you can add a fair amount of intensity in the last section if you've built that kind of aerobic base out, but, um, in terms of risk levels, obviously just adding intensity can be, um, a little on the riskier side where adding easy aerobic volume, your body, um, definitely likes that and can absorb it a lot easier in the first part. But obviously as we get to a race, we need the intensity to, uh, to get race specific and, uh, and get ready for the demands of the race. Um, so here's, uh, kind of an interesting graph here that training peaks posts up, um, of kind of triathlon cycling, you can see runners and kind of some of the ranges in terms of, they do some volume ranges in there weekly TSS, um, kind of recommendations as well as, um, what some of those, so that's CTL being the fitness scores that you would see, um, to kind of be prepped for a race. Um, so some of the, so maybe we'll start on kind of the triathlon side here. I know a lot of you do, uh, half distance and full distance kind of stuff. So, um, a lot of the targets let's, um, look kind of on the, hourly side first, a lot of the recommendations are around kind of that 10 to kind of 12 hours being a, a lower kind of end of training to kind of get ready for an event like that. And then, um, closer to 20 to 30 is where kind of, uh, a more advanced or professional athlete might fall in sections of that. And then you can kind of see some of the weekly TSS that kind of corresponds to a training plan like that. Um, like a full distance one like that, um, if you're doing 30 hours, you probably are doing tons of low intensity time and you're probably almost going to end up with a higher, um, weekly TSS than that. Um, cause you saw in like the Texas block that I'm doing there, I'm going to do probably close to that on some of the peak weeks there, but that's only going to be off of like, um, low twenties, like 22, 24 kind of hours in there for, and that's very, for a small section of it. 
Um, so you kind of see the ranges of what uh, some of those weekly TSS kind of average numbers would be. And that needs to flow throughout the block. And as your fitness is getting higher, you can um, handle kind of more weekly TSS and you need more weekly TSS to continue to push it up that fitness level because your body's adapting more to it. Um, and then in terms of those fitness scores that you see um, here, are some good like targets to reach in there. I've heard like some pro triathletes, I've seen them like post on their Instagrams and stuff where they're at like coming up to like Ironman world championships. And they're at like 230 for their fitness score in there. Those guys are piling on like months and months of 30 to 35 hours a week. So like for us with full-time jobs to try and go after something like that, it just like wouldn't be possible. You'd probably just end up overtrained and they, those guys make training and recovery, just their job essentially. Um, but these are good like numbers to keep in mind of maybe you're looking at uh, your marathon from last year and you're like, wow, I only got up to like 50 on my, uh, my seat on my fitness score for the year. And I was really only doing 250 TSS a week. And I, um, and I really only got up to something like four hours of training in a week. Um, these are like little things you can look at, um, cause they're doing a bunch of this information off of like tons. They obviously can mine tons of data from training peaks. So, um, they're going off of what kind of successful performances were yielded based on, uh, hours TSS and kind of some of those target CTLs. So, um, don't think like if you came in your peak so let's go back to a half distance athlete, like last year, if your peak that you ever hit for a, an event was 50, then you probably aren't going to target like 120 for your next half distance event. That's in six months. You need to kind of reach for those higher kind of target fitness scores as you kind of progress as an athlete. Cause you'll be able to handle that a little better. Like I've been doing triathlon for whatever, eight years or so now that, um, I can, I've been up in certain fitness numbers that I know I can, um, go after kind of higher numbers and be able to absorb that. Cause I have past training to fall on and tons of hours in a year. So things like that. So, um, just being realistic about what a target kind of fitness number can be, um, for you and just trying to be better than you were the last time and doing it in a smart fashion where you're not just trying to go over target on every workout, do it in a methodical way. That's slowly piling on week over week by adding either slight intensity or slight volume depending on what, uh, what the time of year is, there's going to be the best, uh, methodical way and being honest with yourself subjectively that how am I actually feeling in this training? Like, am I ramping too quick? And I'm feeling like all these niggles and I have no energy and I'm sleeping terribly now, then maybe you can't handle a ramp rate of seven on a fitness or on a, um, CTL target per week. And maybe you need to um, keep the weekly TSS a little bit lower, but just continue to progress at a, a slower level week over week to be able to absorb it. So don't become a robot and make sure that you're, uh, you're checking in subjectively with yourself and taking care of all those other pieces around recovery, sleep, nutrition, um, because those are what allow you to actually absorb these numbers in here. Um, uh, like I mentioned, I've mentioned a bunch of times that five to 10% rule is usually a pretty safe one when it comes down to most things in terms of adding, uh, adding weekly volume or kind of that TSS score in there. It's usually a, a pretty safe one to go with. Um, and then, as I mentioned, if you, uh, if you have too little stimulus in that fitness score, you're not giving yourself enough TSS per week, then you'll just result in stagnation and you're not going to get any better or um, if you kind of push it too much, that's where that injury and overtraining can come in. Um, but really it's learning yourself as an athlete or having a coach that can learn you as an athlete of what those ramp rates can be and also how to bring it back to, um, make sure that you're ready for a race. Um, so what some of the take-homes you can do is, uh, obviously if you already have premium training peaks, you can dive into, uh, to tons of this stuff. Um, if you have only a basic account, you might want to consider if you like kind of what you see here and are really curious on some of the stuff, uh, adding on premium, or if there's like maybe one chart or something, uh, that you're curious on, I'm pretty sure anybody who's in my training peaks, I can probably access all the graphs on them anyways. Um, so if you're like a performance plan athlete, that's still on like a basic plan and you had a, a curious and wanted to see a couple screenshots on a, uh, specific, um, 
like your yearly volume or something like that, then, or your fitness and kind of how that looked over the, the while I can always send you like a screenshot of that or like hop on a quick call with you or something, if you wanted to see that. Um, but yeah, just looking at some of your past training, where did you feel great? Where did you not? And kind of what did your, um, scores look like during that time and maybe checking in, was your volume off? Was your TSS ramp rates off, um, that yearly volume review, um, how can you improve going into 2023 based on kind of what you did in the past year? And uh, the best athletes are really the ones that are more consistent over 365 days a year than the people that come in, hit it for four months and then disappear for two and then try and come back again. Your um, just risk for injury is so much bigger and it's so much harder to really hit peak fitness during this time. Um, and just remember, you need those ebbs and flows of that fitness level up and down um, during key times of the year to actually peak four races multiple times. And if you're having like six or seven races in a year that you're all trying to peak for, you're probably not going to hit quite as high of a peak on those races um, versus if you have um, periods where you really go up, have periods of recovery that uh, allow that fitness to drop and then build upon that. So when you're thinking about like your upcoming uh, race schedule, um, good things to think about of either race clustering or kind of spreading those races out in, uh, in bigger periods. Cause it's, uh, it's tough when you're racing a bunch to continually have that nice tick up of, uh, of TSS scores in there because you have these, uh, you need to taper into races. You have these intense races and then you have this time coming out of it, um, where you need to recover again. And you just have these like tough blitz or you can't get like that consistent training to really, um, build your fitness score and maybe improve some of your race tactics, stuff like that. There's tons of value to be added. You could go faster with the same fitness, but, um, when you're really looking at peaking for some of the races, it's good to think around, uh, having those key kind of spread out sections where you can, uh, pile on weeks of TSS building and, uh, continue to improve that fitness score. Um, yeah, if you don't forget that, uh, for those on the performance plan, if you're looking for like a weekly mileage plan form, especially from the run part, that is, uh, is super important that I can build that for you and make sure that you're just slowly taking up volume in a safe way and pairing that with the weekly workouts that we have. Um, and then, yeah, it's, you can see, it's not super complex to be able to add, like, especially this time of year when you're adding volume, um, if you did say three hours of cycling, um, last week, and I'm saying maybe you start, want to start to build out the volume to add on to your TSS per week. So we're holding kind of the, that intensity a little bit similar week over week of just adding like 15 minutes of aerobic riding at like 50% of FTP twice a week to those rides you can still continually improve without adding in more intensity. You see how you can still continue to build that aerobic base, build that fitness score, add on TSS to your week and still continue to improve without necessarily having to hit it harder each week. You're um, doing training your body can actually absorb. So um, just really wanted to hammer home that point that intensity isn't the be all end all. And if you can stick to your, uh, stick to your paces, um, I think, somebody like Jameson's a good example last year of somebody who was almost downright robotic in his running and almost never went over paces or moved from them at all. He just ticked off tons of time in that zone one and two adhered to his paces. And then you saw over time, he was just able to get, be more aerobically fit and hold better paces as he went along. It wasn't from, uh, from just like trying to sprint with, um, Olympians every single run, like he just went about it the right way and never really got injured. And now he's can use that fitness and what he's learned to pile that on for another year. So, um, those are just some, a good, like example of somebody who went about it the right way and saw like really cool results from it. So, um, a good inspiration for us all. Um, one of those final things I heard that this actually in a podcast the other day is like, um, when people talk to me about these like big goals that they have, um, is I, I would love for you to open up your weekly calendar and show me that is your weekly calendar matching your fitness goals. So like, um, when I pull up my weekly calendar ahead of time, I know what my weekly workouts are. They're scheduled in my calendar. They're set up in a way that I know I'm going to be able to get those key workouts in each week. I'm not leaving anything to chance. Um, but when you have a big goal in mind, like it, it's a good thing to check in on yourself is my weekly calendar truly set up 
towards the goals that I'm going after. So um, maybe have a check in on that as well and make sure that you're, uh, you're actually going after what you, uh, what you set out to, because we can all talk a big game, but we got to back it up. Coaches spiel over. Um, let's see here. Any questions in the part there? Oh, James has been hired by Training Peaks and he's dropping uh, discount codes in there for you. Affiliate marketing. Yeah, so Training Peaks does uh, detect some of your run threshold stuff in there, but that's where when we use something like a, uh, a 5K test or a recent race result is, uh, is great. We can put it into that, uh, that run calculator and it will give us a good idea of what kind of that threshold pace is. And like I said, usually that threshold pace lies somewhere, um, but somewhere around like an, what you'd hold for an hour. So for a lot of athletes, that's kind of like 15 K 10 to 15 K pace is where kind of that threshold, um, run value is, but you're going to get your, the best bang for your buck typically from uh, kind of a race result or a time trial and using those uh, online calculators to um, do the run threshold, bike threshold, um, usually from something like an FTP test or a time trial. Um, and then swim ones, you can do those like swim CSS tests where you do like a 400 and a 200 time trial in there. Or some of those ones where Bronwyn gets us to do like 10 times 100 hard um, is usually a lot of times pretty usually a little bit harder than kind of that swim threshold. Cause you wouldn't be able to hold that for a pure 1500, but it starts to give you an idea of like repeatability in there and adding, call it another five seconds per hundred, uh, will probably give you a pretty accurate swim threshold in there. Holy Stevie's throwing 10 months of free training peaks promo codes in there. And yes, Aaron, I keep an eye like on a lot of your zones in there, especially as I, if I see like a TSS or something jump out, that's like really weird on a workout, then I know you probably have something out of date. So yeah, I keep an eye on those, uh, those zones in there for you. It's Stevie hooking people up with 10 months of training peaks promo codes. <laughs> Any other questions or uh, I can let you guys get back to your night. If not, a lot to digest, I know. Is there a, a way to view, like if you have your run paces set, is there a way to view like over a training period, um, uh, like the trend of your heart rate at those paces? I haven't seen anything like that in there. Um, that's a good one. I can maybe dive a little deeper into training peaks, but I haven't seen something that really tracks like um, speed versus kind of heart rate over a, a period of time in there, but I'm sure there's some way you could probably do some settings in there to see um, what that looked like. Could be an interesting one for sure. I could see the value in that. Also wondering like what what's the relationship between like the fitness score and your pacing? Like can, can your fitness score be increasing while you're pacing, like your paces are flat or they, do they kind of move together? Um, no, they could, they could technically, like it, the fitness score is based off of like TSS and workouts that build week over week. So like, essentially you and me doing the same bike. So say like you and me are doing the exact same run workout and we're sticking to our exact, um, paces during that run workout, we're going to end up with the same TSS score for that workout. So as you get fitter, that TSS score, um, is obviously the same, that TSS score for the exact same workout is going to remain the same. So like, um, for you to build fitness, you need to be doing it at a higher intensity going into that next one. If that kind of answers what you're getting at, like you, your requirements to continue to build fitness need to be at that certain new fit, new pacing that you've built to continue to build that fitness. A little bit confusing way to say it, but yeah, your no, TSS it. score is the same because we, we should be working at the exact same intensity on that workout 
relative, relative. To, to one another. And then if you were to build fitness and be running at the exact same paces as me, um, then you would need like more stimulus, higher paces to continue to build that fitness level week over week. So. Training peaks, it's a wild world. Almer's not going to sleep tonight. He's just going to be deep in those graphs all night. That's accurate. Steph, you need to like unplug his computer, unplug the Wi-Fi or something. I've created a monster. I can yeah, that's my it. training peaks password. <laughs> Changes every day. Yeah, that's wise. Um, okay, one, one other question. Keep so I was looking at like my workouts last week. And like, maybe it's just like that it's kind of the first week, like back. Yeah. But I was like consistently like 15% below um, the target TSS score. Okay. At least for the rides. Yeah. Um, like, is that because like my threshold powers probably dropped 15%? probably something along those lines okay. we're using probably still your peak threshold from, yeah we are yeah just looking in there it's still your peak Remember. threshold from before yeah. so like you're probably your tss score is probably correct for those we just right. need to make sure the settings are updated to a correct one which is why we have something like a tt this week that like even if you guys don't do them like my intent for this tt is not for you guys to necessarily like go purely to max on this one, but execute a good TT and you can still extrapolate in and around what your threshold power is based on this TT of like a 20 minute test call it. Even if you don't do it perfectly, you should be able to have a good idea of like how much harder you could have gone. Um, and at least you get somewhat accurate zones. And if it's, uh, if you're still using peak from like a, a season that's clearly dropped, then yeah, it's going to be a little off. So that's definitely the part on your bike there why it was showing a bit lower is it just is it just the one-on-one -on -one, um athletes that have the premium or is it also the, the performance ones um so we i cover it on the uh one-on-one -on -one. if the athlete hasn't already like paid for it for a year i can't undo that but i anybody any of the people on one-on-one -on -one there um i put the premium in there for them um, but not for the performance uh, plan people that would be on them to uh, cover that at their own cost. Okay. All right, let's wrap it up there. We've got a lot of info in there. And I'm going to stop recording. <laughs>